forecast the return of spring to the Canadian prairies. In the forefront are North America's largest geese. In fact, the largest geese in the world. The giant Canada goose, known to science as Branta canadensis maxima. Full-grown adults weigh as much as 18 pounds. Before the coming of the white man, their breeding grounds extended over the Great Plains and up into the Canadian prairies. With settlement, they gradually disappeared from much of their former range due to the destruction of nesting habitat and hunting pressure. Fortunately, they survived T. Hansen of Illinois following a period of intensive study and research. Principal identification, a large size. The bill is massive, the feet and legs proportionately heavy. The cheek patch is large and patches of white are often present on the forehead, and in many flocks there is a pronounced white collar at the base of the long black neck. Though mated on arrival, squabbles frequently break out and clashes occur, but they end up in nothing more serious than loud name calling. Amazingly enough, it's always the ganders with the larger brood of young which win any they mate for life. But if one of a pair dies, another mate will be taken. And in early April, many have already settled down to the serious business of raising a brood. Four to six eggs represent the usual complement. These are protected by a thick blanket of down which lines the nest. The goslings hatch in about 28 days and are a golden yellow color with golden olive on the head and back. Soon after hatching, they leave the nest and in the company of their parents, travel about in family parties, feeding on rich green growth, which is now plentiful. about six weeks, they're ready to fly. While the adults complete nesting duties and the care of their young on the prairie sloughs, the yearlings and older non-breed to their molting period on secluded tundra lakes in the north, far from habitation. Here, they're flightless for about a month. Back on the prairies, summer is still young. In a poplar bluff, a ruffed grouse struts cautiously. 
and drums to attract a mate. This drumming, which takes place on a fallen log, begins in early spring, but can be heard throughout the summer. Meanwhile, the tempo of life quickens in the marshes. A Sora rail searches for food. An eared grebe, water glistening on its plumage, swims and dives. Red-winged and yellow-headed blackbirds occupy the bordering willows and cat-tailed... Their nests, neat, basket-like structures, are securely woven into supporting vegetation. The young, barely able to fly, scramble about among the reeds. Getting back onto a floating nest from the water is not easy, but watch how this red-necked grebe does it. Ready for the countdown? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Settling on the eggs is tricky too. the time of duck broods. Each marsh, slough, and pothole has its quota. A mother gadwall hurries to safety with her colorful brood. A well-grown brood of blue-winged teal Canvasback and redhead broods swim out into deep water. for the largest and most devoted brood could well go to this merganser. Many duck food plants are gaily flowered, like this water persicaria, commonly known as lady's thumb, and also the arrowhead or duck potato. Once on the wing, broods begin flocking together, and there is a constant coming and going from marsh to marsh as longer distances are covered.
Late summer days, nesting chores over, pelicans enjoy each other's company, and they thrill the watcher with their mastery of the air. Like giant airliners, they glide in to perfect landings. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. Flight 86, now landing on runway 7. Largest birds. They leave for the south in early fall, wintering along the Gulf of Mexico and into Central America. An important inhabitant of a marsh is the muskrat. Not only is this animal valuable for its pelt, it plays a vital role in ecological balance. Cutting channels through thick cattail growth and opening up these dense reed beds to provide better habitat for a large number of waterfowl. Muskrat houses provide nesting and loafing spots for ducks. Young muskrats are born naked and blind. There are six in an average litter, and several litters each year. Well, that takes care of the marsh, all right. But how come no one mentioned me? Ombrary, a third-striped ground squirrel, looks over the situation. Wildflowers still bloom profusely. Marsh ragwort. Prairie coneflower. Bottle gentian. Wild sunflower. Indian paintbrush. Thistle and butterfly. Marsh milkweed. Like an ocean of gold, the rich harvest of grain is ripening. Soon it will be cut and spread in striking patterns on the land. Fall closes in. The yearling and non-breeding giant Canadas arrive back from northern concentration areas, the first step in their southward journey. The W.A. Murphy Sanctuary at East Meadows, Manitoba, is one of their fall staging areas. Family groups merge into flocks and travel to favored feeding areas. Shortening days and frosty nights bring more geese from the north. Soon now, the final departure will take place.
Hunters still take their harvest of the giant cannabis, but thanks to an excellent record of nesting success and protection on their wintering grounds, they are still maintaining substantial numbers. Let us hope that these wonderful birds continue to thrive and that in the years to come, the prairie skies will resound with these familiar calls of the giant Canada goose.